So um, Liz will be on minutes that's tonight. And I apologize for the delay in getting started. Um, we are going, I'm going to call the meeting to order at 6.35 and ask if we have any public to be heard. Uh, I thought I saw a hand. Okay, I think the only public we have is Peter. And um, if I see that you're on mute, Peter, but I imagine if you um, have anything for us, you'd either raise your hand or unmute. And so, Al, I see your hand. I just wanted to. Yeah, I would let you know. Okay, thank you, Peter. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Al. Uh, I was just going to. Uh... Uh, request an addition to a, an a item for the agenda. I uh, understand we're going to have a uh, COVID update at the next meeting. And I apologize for the horse voice, but a lot of things have been happening. In any case, uh, the board members may have questions for that meeting. Wanted to at least make sure that we, they all had an opportunity to at least ask any questions now so that Beth could be uh, prepared. I'm wondering, uh, I, I think uh, what might make more sense since this is a special meeting called for a specific purpose of approving right. the ballots and the annual warning. Um, what I am gonna ask board members to do, uh, we added a, given the, um, the, the recently announced change in guidance, or the vaccination schedule or however else we want to. Um, the, the various notifications that our superintendent is getting at the same time as the rest of the world on WCAX or NPR or VPR. Um, so I, I think uh, what makes sense is for us to, for folks with questions, um, to funnel them through Martha and myself, and we will make sure Beth has them, but we have uh, superintendent's report on the second meeting in March, which I think is the 23rd, um, that will go into as much detail as we're able to around the changing guidance, around any planning that's happening around that for any changes in our plans. Um, I think that'll give more time for it to be um, with the knowledge of any additional guidance that comes out versus simply the announcements. So what will happen next week is um, a brief reminder of sort of where we are with policy around delegation to the superintendent and the, the factors that that's looking at and any, maybe there'll be other things that have come out of additional guidance, but that's a pretty quick turnaround. So what I'm gonna invite folks to do is just um, send questions through Martha and myself. We'll make sure Beth has them. We've got a short amount of time allotted on the ninth and a more um, extensive conversation devoted at the end of the month. So hopefully that works for folks. When should we have that to you to, to enable oh, enough time by tomorrow? Yeah, I, I, literally having a meeting on a Wednesday night is like got my week all messed up. <laughs> I don't even know what day we're on. It's gotta be Tuesday, is it not Tuesday? Um, so I would say, uh, you know, maybe by the end of the week or even best, you know, I think we aren't gonna, you know, we might be able to have some responses, but I think even having a sense of the questions is really important. So is Friday fair, Beth? Is that? Friday by the end of the day is absolutely fine. Um, I have probably more questions than you have. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's probably what we're gonna find in this quick turnaround. But I think just even a reminder for us, we'll be able to go over sort of our role in all of this and the things that Beth's looking at every day and reporting up to the state, you know, on a whatever regular schedule that is, and the the types of things that come to us through her superintendent support monthly. Great. So yeah, that, that sounds like a good plan. I appreciate that. And for the board members that are here, I just wanted to say, uh, uh, you know, I had that a major surgery. This is day nine of recovery. We're not there. It's going to be a long road. Uh, so. I'm taking them one at a time. I appreciate all the well wishes and uh, 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 just thank you. So, go ahead, Kim. Thanks so much, Al. Can you all hear me? I mm -hmm. keep getting an unstable internet message. So, all right. Well, I am going to move us along in the agenda. Uh, and. Uh, oh. Oh, thank 
you. I'm sorry. Sorry, Todd. I didn't see that. Go ahead. That's okay. I just wanted to follow up since I was the one who who raised the idea of the board just reviewing the emergency policy and getting an update on that. It sounded like you said we would get an update on that at our March 9th meeting. Is that correct? Yes, Todd. I, we're going to um, remind ourselves where we stand in policy and the emergency um, state of affair, or state of emergency, and then also um, let Beth share with us the factors that she's looking at routinely and that which she's reporting up. Um, we won't necessarily get a distillation of that data in that moment. I know we will in our superintendent's report. But otherwise, questions that people, specific questions people have, I think if we funnel them through us, Martha and I will have a heads up on which ones are for us to respond to, which ones are for Beth to respond to. We'll make sure we share everything with Beth and Brian then. Okay, well, I just want to say I appreciate you doing that because, you know, with that delegation of authority, I think it's a huge responsibility of the board to revisit that and see how it's going. So thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for raising it, Todd. All right. Thank you, Martha. I, we, I think we're good with future agenda items, which we moved right up to the top of the beginning of the agenda, but that's great. I'm glad we had a, a second to address that. Um, public to be heard, we took care of. So approving the mailing of ballots. I don't know if we have particular, uh, um, I guess we've had this conversation. I need to have a better sense of exactly what we need to do with in terms of an action item. And go ahead, Martha. So I got in touch with the SBA who contacted the Secretary of State's office and they said that because it did involve the expenditure of funds, we should take formal action to um, mail all the ballots. So I will make a motion that we mail a ballot to every active registered voter for the April 13th vote. Thank you, Martha. Any discussion on that? No. No. Okay, go ahead, Todd. Sorry, I'm on fire tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You know, I really supported this last go around. And I, I, I just think we should think about how many ballots were returned in the recent town election versus how many were mailed out. And, you know, if that's just, I don't want to say a waste of resources, but it's a huge effort. And if it's worth the effort, given how many ballots were left unreturned. I mean, some people just, they decide not to vote. So whether we, I mean, we could stuff a ballot down their throat and they might decide not to return it. So uh, just just something I've been thinking about. Um, I mean, the idea of doing it is great, but will it have a, a practical difference? I don't know. Um, thanks, Todd. Diane? Okay, so... I would say that given the current COVID situation, it's probably wiser to mail than not. Your point, Ty, with uh, how many people return them. Um, people were returning our ballots from last June, by the way, at this time. Um, and, uh, and the November vote, which happened to be orange. So it's kind of interesting to see the legal size come in and the, and the, and the orange ones come back. Um, so people recognized it was time to vote. They just didn't grab the right ballot. Okay, so that, but it's, I would say that actually the turnout that we had for town meeting day was actually quite responsive, actually. Normally 25% is considered, you know, okay. Um, the fact that we had like 40, 42, 45% for the entire town, of course, we haven't included Westford on that one. And I don't know what they had up there. Um, I would say that we had a pretty good response. Now, I would also say that the select board kind of lowballed and low keyed this. And I think um, if we do what Aaron has been doing, like on like a weekly message or something, and we get people stirred up 
to look at our website, um, ask some questions. Um, I, I think we need to, quite frankly, stir people up and we might actually get 50%. Um, which would be a lovely, lovely turnout, by the way. And I would, as somebody who works the polls, I would be overwhelmingly impressed. Um, you would not believe. Um, so um, I would say it's worth it, but I think it's as much, it's worth as much as we're willing to put in on it to get people involved. Thank you. Thanks, Diane. And Andre. Um, I guess I support and the uh, mailing of the ballots to all the registered voters. And I do appreciate Todd's uh, concern and comment on the expense, but given the fact that the school vote occurs on April 13th and not on the first Tuesday, I think it lends itself to have a greater turnout until it gets changed. I remember pre-COVID, a few people asked if they were gonna vote and, oh, I didn't even know when it was, I forgot. And I think the mailing of the ballots at least brings an awareness to when the school vote is occurring. And I do hope in the future we can re-examine shifting it back to first Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And that, I'm, that's still on my mind. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Andre. And Liz. Yeah, thanks, Andre. I think that's on a lot of our minds today. <laughs> <laughs> how we can do better in a lot of ways. But, um, and I just wanted to say, I, I think that, that it's a really good time. And thank you, Diane, for your comment too, as we move into policy governance and the ownership that the board needs to take for community engagement and community and communication, that um, this effort, that we really acknowledge what that means and, and, and that we're gonna need to lean in. Mm -hmm. Uh, instead of maybe just a, uh, a committee of we're going to have to, as a board, really do our job about talking about not only for the budget, which of course is crucial right now till April, but in a year long strategy to engage the community on, on the ends and the outcomes and really diving in in a way that's going to look and feel a little bit different, but I'm excited about. So. Thanks, Liz. And. Um... Uh, is that a new hand? Yeah, it's a new hand. I just wanted to say I wasn't advocating that we not do it. I just thought it was good that to bring up the issue to actually have a discussion rather than just kind of fly through it. I think it was good for us to get our yeah. uh, opinions out there. So thank you. Yeah, thanks, Todd. Noted. And, and I think it, it is a good conversation. And I think we have struggled to um, see how we can improve voter participation and, um, and whatever the challenges have been, there have some been some COVID wins and it's caused us to think a little differently, maybe invest a little bit more, but we are certainly seeing a return on that with respect to participation. So um, is there any further discussion? Are we ready for the question? I don't see any other hands. Um, and Erin did weigh in in the chat, just in case people didn't see it, but she also supports mailing ballots. Thanks, Erin. Um, all right, so all those in favor of mailing ballots to all active registered voters, um, please signify by saying aye. 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 And all aye. those opposed? Okay, I don't see any opposed. Um, so that is gonna pass. Nine, is it unanimous? nine oh. zero. Sorry, I was realizing Brendan's not here. Kim, I have an <laughs> update on what's needed for volunteers. I don't know. That would be want that great. now, or do you want me to email that out? Um, if you want to, is it? Can you give us a quick I can't, overview of what that is and then you. send it? Yep, I'll give it to you quick, and then I'll follow up with an email. So Westford needs two people to assist, um, should be school board members or a person that a voting member in the town. Um, and then Essex needs eight total volunteers, four at a time for two days. 
So, or you could do two days as one person, but they need two days, um, four people at a time to help them. And they will also be staffing that. They already have their dates. Essex does, it's March 16th and 22nd. And I, again, I can send it out to you, but. That'd be great, thank you. Eight to four, so you could split that shift. We don't have dates for um, Westford yet. Okay. Thanks so much. And Brian, thank you. It was an eight zero vote, Liz. Sorry. I always forget that we're 10 people, nine votes, 12 people, nine votes. So thank you, Brian, for catching me on that. Um, and thanks for the update, Beth. We'll just look for that in email so that we can check our calendars and see to what extent that works. And the eight to four shift might naturally lend itself to breaking down in half shifts or something to that effect. Um, and I assume, is there any, are there any restrictions or guidelines other than the COVID compliance that'll happen in this space? Are, is this something that um, we will open up in terms as we had in last year to um, community member volunteering as well? Is that, do you think that would be um, the case? So I don't know about for Essex, but Westford definitely said that, you know, they would, appreciate school board members. Nanette really wants to oversee that and do that and it's a small space. So yep. she gave pretty, you know, the orders of what we needed and um, yep. not sure about Essex. They just said the number. So I'm sure it's school board members and volunteers too from the, you know, um, that live in the village or outside of the village. Um, I don't know how many volunteers we can actually get from the school. We did think if we're short, we could call substitutes and see if that's what they would want to do. But. Okay. Thank you. I was thinking about it from a communication standpoint too. And, and maybe um, once we've had opportunity for board members to check calendars and see where we can contribute our time if we've got additional need. Um, maybe that's something either Ben or that yeah. that we could um, create the whatever the most efficient process is for filling that with other support. Kim, Diane, um, yeah, I didn't have my hand up, but I'm going to interject and say that because I'm on the ballot running again, I can't be there. Yep. And I have been a anchor in the past. Um, so when she calls for you know, I've stepped up and somebody's gonna have to take my time because I can't, by, by <laughs> restrictions, I can't be there. Um, I can, Nor I can will Liz be functions. able to be. I can do other functions, but I can't handle the ballots. It's it's part of that. Yeah. Um, that makes so, sense. And that, that's true for Liz as well. That's true for Liz um, as well. So we, we, uh, we're restricted to, uh, to handling certificate envelopes, but we can't handle the ballots themselves. Yeah. Uh, so please, yes. please. And please. you both put in a lot of time last time around. So yeah, um, yes, yeah let's, let's helpful, figure yeah. out how best to populate that with the support we can offer from the board side of things. And then, um, and then in, engage with Ben or whomever the most appropriate avenue is for trying to see to what extent community is available to help and then as a, it sounds like somewhat of a last resort, we could um, consider calling in subs. So it's good to know we've got plan A, B, and C. That works. All right, thanks for that update. Um, I am going to ask as well, if I could, for a motion to approve the annual meeting warning, and then we can take a closer look together. Maybe Brian puts it up, is that? So, um, Kim, I'm. Does approving the warning substitute for our approving the proposed budget? Or I'm wondering oh. if we should have two votes. I didn't think of it until just this minute. Can anybody remember what we have done historically? We should have two separate votes. That's what we always did in Westford. They haven't okay. normally occurred simultaneous. That's what I mean. 
So, uh, I mean, we, it's probably best practice and it just never has come up before because we just haven't been signing the warning at the same meeting that we've been approving the budget. Yep. It's an action that item sense. that's not warned. Um, is that problematic? Robert's rules people. I don't know what our options are. <laughs> it, it, might, it might be. Uh... I thought in the past, I thought we always approved it uh, before a warning. Yeah. I think we've done it simultaneous, like in the same meeting, but Martha, I think you're muted. Yeah, without a warning, an action item, I'm not sure. I mean, the board actually doesn't have the authority to approve the budget, right? It's so the, the amount, right? So the board, the board is is choosing to put this budget to the voters, which is the action of the warning. True. Um, so I mean, I, I think I agree with Todd is that in a perfect world we would end the budget meeting and we would have discussion and we would move to the point where we might take action on approving the budget. But again, that approving is not a function of the board; um, it is the electorate. Approve the budget. But should we give Chris a call just to make sure? Mm. I think if we approve the warning, um, that it's fine. I think Brian's right. It, it, it isn't how we've done it in the past. We've often voted on what's the number we want to put on the warning. Um, All right. But if we approve the warning, we're approving the number. So I, I, I think we'd be fine just to approve the warning. I just want to make sure everyone's clear that when we do approve the warning, we are approving the budget number. Operate to uh, different polling times for all three communities. So if yeah. you'll have a, we'll be able to share screen and look at the yep. warning that we'll be acting on. Yep. Thanks, Byron. These are also all in the board materials, but this is yep. the that you just spoke about is that there's a set of polling hours for the village of Essex Junction and Essex Town and a different set of hours for um, Westford. Thank you. All the polls, and this was, I did speak with um, the board's legal counsel on this, and this is the wording that he suggested back. He said there's no, there's no requirement that they open at the same time. There is a, he gave me the impression that there's a requirement that they close at the same time. Ours, that was sense. our plan to start off with, so it, it didn't seem like I needed to get a whole lot of understanding and substantiation mm -hmm. of that. Did we put the budget amount in the motion? It, the budget amounts for um, the school district are within the- I mean, what, the way the, the, I mean, just in the motion that we're making right now as the board to approve the annual meeting morning. Should we add, should we include it? Which should includes. We, right, should we add, should we say, that's right. Yeah, I think that, that's a belt and suspender approach. I mean, I think yeah. that, that makes it real clear that the warning was approved with those specified numbers in it. I'm comfortable doing exactly what we're doing right now because this makes it a fait complete. We have in the past approved the budget number as a separate item versus it making it part of this. And after speaking with individuals in the Board of the Soil Authority in Essex yesterday, uh, who are at the polls, a lot of them were uncomfortable. And after seeing the Westford vote going from seven to seven, some of the BCA yesterday had the opinion that Essex should be seven to seven too. People vote by rote. They're used to coming in and doing this. I, I can't state it more strongly 
that that if you're going to change the times, this is going to have to be very well publicized because people are going to show up at that school and expect to get in the building and vote at seven o'clock. It's just the way things have been. Now, I recognize that June was different, but you know, this is April as opposed to June and being totally whacked out like June was. Um, I, I'm going to say that right now, given the procedure we're doing right now, I'm gonna vote no. And I have never voted no on a budget before, but I'm gonna vote no, because I don't like the procedure that we're doing right now. Diane, if I could clarify, is the problem with the differential in the voting hours, is it with the, the budget like the figure, which we discussed? I was just actually looking at the law. I pulled up the enabling legislation for school boards and was just looking, honestly, in my uninformed legal opinion, to see where it says, and it says we should. It says we um, shall put before the, the board shall present the budget to the voters by means of a ballot in the following form. Um, and, you know, it's the language that's in our ballot. Um, and it talks about, yeah, so I, we have to provide the information on the budget prepare and distribute annually a proposed budget for the next school year. I was just making sure that there was nothing, it, this would be different if we had not been discussing for the last many meetings, the development of the budget and the budget figures haven't changed since our last conversations regarding the budget. So this is not, um, in, this is not changing anything we have um, vetted very thoroughly, so I just, I want to better understand, Diane. I, I, I'm not, I don't have a problem with the numbers. I, I don't have a problem with the administration making decisions as to where that, how, where that money is spent and how it is spent. Um, I have a problem with us doing something a fait accompli without having this warrant that we're going to approve that budget number. The public expects that we have done some homework, that we have done some um, challenging, challenging the administration to make sure that this is the best budget that we can have for our students. And this just seems like we're putting the cart before the horse. Um, it, it's a procedural piece that I'm having a problem with. It, it, it's not the numbers themselves, okay? It is the procedural piece. It's the board's budget, the administration put it together, but we own it, okay? And we hand it back to the administration to do it. Um, man, that was always my perception. If I'm wrong, I'll you now show me the legal stuff that tells me I'm wrong. Um, I'll, I'll keep looking. Is it okay, Diane, if I just take a few other hands and then sure. I might put in the chat the section of the law I'm looking at. I'm looking under Title 16, Chapter 9, powers of school board. Um, so I, I will pay attention to our conversation and try and at least pull a couple of the pieces that I'm looking at. I, I can't find anywhere where um, this is, I guess, unfortunately, it, it feels like a technicality where we have spent, I don't know how many hours and meetings um, doing due diligence on this budget. Nothing has changed since the last round of meetings on this topic. So um, where we didn't warn a vote on that separately, anybody interested in seeing our process could either look online, watch our meetings. We've, we've vetted um, each of the sections of the budget to understand how it aligns with our vision and what we're trying to accomplish for kids. Um, for many, like I said, Kim, yeah, we, for know. many months, I guess. So I understand. Help. It's the process. I want to try and help you um, see where we're not breaking any rules process. in doing this. It's not the past weeks, months. It's today's process, right? Yeah, now. understood. So I just want to, like, I would feel terribly if your support of the budget 
didn't wasn't able to be um, voted for sort of a technicality. So I want to find see to what extent there's language that helps people feel comfortable voting on the warning and expressly indicating the part of the warning that speaks to the budget that we're approving um, as the way we um, put the motion forth, because I think that accomplishes both and making sure that as I glance at the law, um, that there's nothing preventing us from taking the action as a combined, um, combined uh, motion. Martha, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, Diana, I'm trying to get all of that out of my head. Go ahead, Martha. I, I just wanted to say a couple of things. One, at the last meeting, when we finished the presentation and the questions, I specifically said, this is the time to talk about the budget if you have specific concerns about where we're at with the budget, this is the time to bring them up. I was trying to have that discussion at that moment. I would also point out that we can change this warning tonight. So if someone doesn't think this is the budget we want to approve, then we can amend the warning to make the budget whatever we want it to be. So I think approving this warning accomplishes what you're talking about, Diane. Um, so I, I think we're, it may be slightly different from how we've done it in the past, um, but the opportunity to talk about the number was certainly made clear at our last meeting. And we still can talk about it tonight if people don't think it's the right number. Um, on a different subject, Diane, um, the Board of Civil Authority met in Westford um, on Saturday. And um, I tried to make the case that we should all have the same hours, but because the Westford School is going remote for the day, because the way it's set up, it wasn't gonna be possible to have voting in the school and to have students there. Um, it, it means that it's possible to have the polls open for what, you know, for whatever hours we wanted. Um, and I got outvoted. Um, so that's why Westford is on here from seven to seven. We don't have the student safety issue that the high school and middle school will have if voting starts at 7 a.m. Thanks, Martha. See, I thought I had seen Todd's hand. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd, Todd, are you all set? I thought I had seen your hand before. Well, I had lowered it. I, it just, my concern is, the um, with the change in the voting hours, if we're just creating a uh, a problem that we don't need, can I inquire? Um, and this is maybe a Diane question and others. On the day that the polls are open, isn't there a drop box at the polls as well? No. Or is that not. not true? What, what, what okay. ends up being so the drop box is available at the town offices no. until close of business the day before. Yes. And then on the day of, what is, if you're going there on the day of, you bring your ballot into the space or is there 
a box to drop it outside the space. There, at, yesterday, I had someone greeting people and to oversee that drop box so that people did not have to enter into the gym. And yes, some of them are there at seven in the morning uh, with high school in session and, this, and EMS in session yesterday. So, um, so if we're worrying about seven o'clock and kids being secure, um, why didn't we have that concern yesterday about town meeting? But that's we did. We weren't consulted at the time. Um, the warning was published without consultation of the school district. Okay, I think we're going to have to have discussions with our municipal partners. Um, so, uh, well, we did after the fact, and Andrew Brown has been involved in this decision and talking about the safety of the students as people are coming and going. And, you know, as superintendent, if you want to overrule that and go back to 7 a.m., 7 to 7, we Brian, don't um, throw daggers at me, but I, we can do that. I, I don't think it's worth sitting here and arguing about this when we said it was for the safety of children. We have we worked with the, the people in the village to have this happen, but if you want to override that and go from seven to seven, we will put the police back in and do the re-entry in the back. Our students made it happen for town meeting day. It's not the safest way to go, but we can certainly do that again. The village was amending their time as well to 10 a.m. Yeah. Um, so we'll no, need to right. just make sure that we coordinate with them um, so that it's seamless for voters. Um, do, do we know their timeline on that? I mean, if we were to make a change on the fly here, Martha, I think you had a head. I, I was copied on the exchanges you had with Andrew. And I see your hand. Oh dear. Um, just to make this even worse, I think technically, if the hours are not going to be seven to seven, the BCA has to vote to change it. I think it's somewhat unpopular with the administration, but I would think with it just being the village in the school vote, which is probably a lot less turnout than a normal town meeting, that it makes sense to go seven to seven and not set ourselves up for criticism that we don't need because we changed the hours. There's going to be people who are just so used to seven to seven you could bombard them with information and they're just not going to, they're not going to hear it. They're not going to see it. Agree. Do we have any way of making sure the village hasn't already called a meeting to change their, I think, it, I, I don't know if anybody knows when they were approving their warning. I'm on the website. I can't see a warned meeting right now. Um, Towns need to do it 30 to 45 days before the meeting, I believe. Which is why we, we went for a special meeting to try to give us a little bit more time. So maybe we're ahead of them. I don't have Andrew's cell phone number. I don't think, I don't, I don't know that I have a quick way of getting in touch with him. Um, I, I can text Rod. I can text, I can text Rod, Rod. right now. That'd be great just to see that they've not taken it up. I think they were accommodating our concerns regarding safety if we're going back to seven to seven. My guess would be they're fine with that I, unless they've already voted otherwise. Um, I, I am concerned about the safety. I know Beth had said that, it, that the concern regarding voting in our schools um, while schools are in session is, is real and it may warrant consideration for whether or not kids are in school on town meeting day, for instance, in normal years going forward. So I know um, that's something they've considered. Um, and I think we've technically gone back and forth on it a few times in different iterations for the last many years. So um, I, I think we um, 
I'm just a little bit pausing right now in case Liz, what, what is the will of this board? If we've heard the reasons why it is harder to, it is, it is com makes complete sense to me that in Westford where that space is entirely different and they need to go remote to have the votes at all. Um, at, at the middle school, that can be cordoned off as separate space. And that's why that school can be left open. I am honestly not exactly sure how it happens at the high school. Is Do kids come in a different door and, um, and people go directly to the gym? We yeah. did arrange that for town meeting, yes. Okay, so that's what we would need to do. Um, it, okay. it does, there's traffic jams for sure. And, you know, there certainly was on town meeting day and people going into the um, Essex Middle School, you know, in the beginning of the day. That's why the starting at 10 just is a little safer for kids. It's crazy in a normal day. Kids running yeah. from founders to the middle school <laughs> traffic without voters. Yeah. So, um, but if we can figure if they voted or not, and we can change this. Liz, have you been able to get Raj? No, can I haven't heard back move? from him. Okay. Um, him? Yeah. I would suggest that I'm trying to email Andrew right now just on the off chance that he's on his email. Um, I think maybe we should talk about the budget and whether folks are comfortable with the budget number and then go back to the question of hours. Thank you, I was just gonna suggest the same. I see Liz's hand, is that, did you? Yeah, <clears throat> Raj said it has not been worn yet and he assumed seven to seven would be popular, but. Okay. Um, let's let that sit in just for a minute then and let's get back to the question of the warning outside of the hours and the um, ability to bring this as a motion and speak specifically to Article uh, 5 in articulating the amount um, as noted in the warning. I know that given the amount of time we've spent um, understanding the investments being made, I feel that um, that I feel completely comfortable. If there had been a change from the last meeting to this one on the amount of the numbers, the only thing that even changed in the last meeting before that, I think, was that there were different tax implications that we came to know. So for the last couple of meetings, I believe we've been looking at the same bottom line that had a slight change in impact related to taxes. Am I remembering that correctly, Brian? I think it was only I think it was like three meetings ago that there was a change. Yeah, we, it was, um, I think it was the direction going into the second meeting that we use the house, that we use the house ways and means committees uh, bill for the projection of tax impact. And so we yeah. departed from that. And there was also a series, there was a change report that was provided um, ahead of time to the board that showed a crosswalk between the difference between the first budget they saw and the second budget they were about to see. And then it hasn't changed since then. Right. Okay, Connie, thank you. Erin. Um, can I just make a motion? I don't know if I'm able to do that. You let me know, know procedurally, but can I just make a motion that we approve the numbers in articles five, six, and seven as presented to us in the motion? Here we go. I think we can do that, and um, and can we can would you be comfortable extending that to say approve the warning, which includes the budget numbers in Article Five, Six, and Seven? So it is all done in one warned motion. 
Yes. Thanks, Amy. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Is that, do you think that was okay, Martha? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank no, you. That's okay, except if we're gonna change the voting hours, we're gonna have to amend this motion. Oh, and also I'll, I'll then interject that I would state um, that I, just, just me, I would say that we should change the hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I know that it's not optimal, but I think the reality is, is that our schools are where we vote. And so if fortunately, you know, we've now done it for town meeting, I think we might have to do it one more time. That's just my opinion. So I know it's not optimal, but I would then say that we should change that also. Okay. So let's hold off, if you don't mind, just for a second on the motion, okay. Aaron, then, then yeah. that would be great. I'll take it in an ideal world. I think you'll make the motion with all the things we've just discussed, if that's where we go with this. So I just want to get any other hands that are out there and any other conversation and then just have a, a sort of a show of consensus if we're going to go with the change. And I see Diane's hand. I'm not sure, Diane, if that's old no. or new. No, that, that's new. I, I will... Uh, agree with Erin's motion as the as she's going to make. Thanks, Diane. I think that may get to some of the challenges that we had, and we'll know next time to definitely make two different, you know, votes of this very intentionally. Go ahead, Martha. So I don't love having the hours be such that it isn't as safe as possible for our students. But I also really think that to change the hours to 10 to 7, the Board of Civil Authority would have had to vote to do so. And I don't believe they have. Um, no. So I think much as I don't like voting for seven to seven, I think we need to. And the fact that it was just done on Tuesday um, makes me feel slightly more comfortable about that as well. Thanks, Martha. Does anybody feel differently? I see Andre clapping. <laughs> Thanks, Andre. <laughs> Uh, Dave's got his hand up too. I, maybe he wasn't meaning to clap. <laughs> Go ahead, Andre. Um, doesn't um, procedurally, does the civil authority, the board for each community have to vote on the voting hours? Are we authorized to change our hours without their authority? I mean, yeah. and the reason I brought this up is this was presented in Westford and it was the Board of Civil Authority that voted to go 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with the change, but I, I don't want us to get tangled up in a mess that the local boards of civil authority did not approve that. It sounds like maybe we weren't aware, but it, Diane doesn't seem to recall that um, there had been such a vote. I don't think we were aware that that would have been necessary. And right. so seven to seven is probably what is being expected. And it sounds like we are moving towards, and I guess I just want to make sure nobody has any objection, except for our concern for the safety of students and our appreciation that um, the administration and the folks at the high school and the middle school will deal with um, the challenge of the morning on another day as, as they did yesterday. So I'm leaning and I'm seeing, I, I just anybody pipe up if you think we shouldn't move it to seven to seven. All right, I don't see any hands. So Aaron, it looks like Brian is taken care of. Well, I need to know what the preference of the board is to either amend the language that was written by your council to sort of strike out the difference between two communities or to return back to the language that the board adopted for its annual meeting um, last year. 
Which is the... Personally, I think it, it makes it clear. So the first one, the amended, the strikeout? Keep uh, the strikeout. I, I think the strikeout ought to be left in, personally, because it, it, it identifies the two polling places and the locations, and it helps clarify. I you agree. Know, I mean, there are new voters in the town and village. Well, there's, there's a section down here that also has to change, but also identifies where the polling places are. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So, if I could... uh, what, Is there any reason, since we're going back to uniform polling time, is there any reason not to use what we've always used? Right. Which is the blue language, correct, Brian? Yes. And couldn't we simply approve the polling hours and leave it up to council to draft the language we need to make the uh, warning appropriate? I don't know because Martha and I have to go sign the warning. And I think when we're voting right now, we're voting the warning, not just the content. Is that correct? Maybe Martha or whoever knows. I think the blue, think the blue is good on the content. Um, Brian, the language this year seems to have articles one through 11 included in it and the language last year did not. Um, I, I don't know why that was put in there this year. Do you? Billable hours? Um, no, I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I, I think it, you know, I mean, Chris, Chris wrote that and we replaced what uh, Beth and I had kind of begun to work on. Um, I don't think it's a statutory requirement, but, you know, it, I do have a comfort level of sort of sticking with his and just breaking, just eliminating the designation that we had before. So, it would, it would read the polls will open at 7 a.m. Um, period, the polls will remain open until 7 p.m. when the polls will close. I um, like that, I think it's fine. I'd get that blue piece out of there. And the polling locations are just a little bit further down. Yeah. And then I think we need for the polling locations, we need to change this so the voters are right. Imagine if we were watching you use a typewriter. <laughs> Troll. Perfect. I think that, that does it. So, mm -hmm. so if, um, if, and to me, is there any additional discussion? And then we'll, we'll do the motion and now we don't need to actually amend the warning um, because Brian just did that and that's the one that you're going to reference, Aaron, if you're okay with that. And, sure. and speak to the amounts indicated in those articles, that would be great. Okay, so I still move, tell me if I'm wording this correctly. Um, I move that we accept um, the warning as presented to us um, with the numbers indicated in articles. What are they again, Brian? I can't see them. <laughs> oh, five, six, and seven. Mm -hmm. All right, thank Here you. Man. And um, is it accept or approve, Martha? It's oh. approve. 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 Sorry. That's okay. That's, is it fine for us to just, <laughs> Aaron's language meant to say approve. All the other stuff Aaron said. You got that, Liz? <laughs> I, got right. I got that. What she said. Perfect. What she said. I got it. Um, any further discussion, folks? Thank you all. This is a little bit clunkier, but could I ask for all those in favor to signify by saying aye? Aye. 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 And, and anyone opposed? All right. Thank you. It passes 8 0. 
Um, thanks for sticking with us on this. I think that was it on our agenda for tonight. And we will, um, we will have further conversation on any updates next round. Please don't forget to get Martha and myself any questions you have for us to share or pass along to Beth and Brian. Um, we will look forward to seeing you in mere six days from now. Um, and thanks so much, everybody. I will adjourn us, Liz, at 7.30. Can I just say one thing, two things? Yes. First of yes. all, thank you for approving the warning. Um, it uh, shows great support and all the work that Brian did with the budget as well. Okay. Leadership team we met today and we worked on our um, response to intervention plans for next year and even this spring and worked with a national um, coach that we have with us and we just so much appreciated the focus of the budget and that it really is around our students growth um, and what our struggling students as well so I just want to share that. Um, thank you. And then also I've been a little distracted this evening. I'm sorry if you noticed that I had, we have quite a few COVID cases coming in that I've been trying to manage as mm -hmm. we've been doing this. So I apologize. You probably will get information and reports shortly. Yeah. And you'll know what Beth was doing. <laughs> I, do uh. have, I do have Chris. Um, he, he did get to me, but I can have a conversation with him after. I'm pretty sure that we're all fine for what you did this evening. Okay. Martha. Yeah, I'm in communication with Evan right now and, um, I'll pass along if I, if there's a problem, I'll, I'll make sure that, you know, ahead of time, if it's all set, then we'll be good to go. Thanks. Go ahead, Martha. <laughs> I, I almost hesitate to bring this up, but Beth, I just saw a communication about two COVID cases at some, and it identified the grades the students were in. I'd never seen that done before. We have been doing that. Um, when we can, we do identify if it's not identifiable. It's very difficult to do at the high school because of the routes and the schedules that they take. So you can't really identify um, I had this conversation with Iris one time. It's very difficult to, to, to do. Even at middle school, sometimes it's difficult to identify the grade. If we don't though, um, we end up, Diana, our COVID coordinator and myself end up probably with 30 emails saying, wow. it's mine okay, where is it? And you know, just to give as much information and being transparent, but not identifiable information. So we have that, we started that, then there were a few times when we couldn't because it was identifiable. And then we, so every time we ask, is it identifiable? It so. just seems to me that then everybody's gonna say, who is it? I think that happened um, with our very first case at Essex Elementary when we had one in K. But mm -hmm. it helps if you're in second grade that you know that at least you know a grade level. Right, I'm just gonna, Quick, I don't even know if I can do this, but I'm gonna just unadjourn us. Let's not count that as our adjourn time because we're still chatting. If it's okay, we'll I'll just adjourn us in another minute or so. If that is, I don't even know if that's okay, but um, it feels better than us all chatting after. Um, so Andre, and then and then we will ideally adjourn. Okay. Uh, a quick question: um, In looking at the uh, reporting of the COVID cases. Is there a basis for not identifying whether it's staff or student? I, I know other districts do identify whether it's a staff or a student that became is positive. And I know you're, you're striving to protect the identity, but I have to wonder if there's a basis for not identifying whether it's a student or a staff. It's more even more identifiable. If I okay. said right now a this is not true, but no. <laughs> a second grade teacher at Essex Elementary, then that narrows it down, right? And then you okay. have a class that goes out. So then you definitely know who it is. So if you say in our community, that's what we have chosen to do as a district and keep it. Everybody knows though. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They know Thanks. before they get the letter. They know, they know. <laughs> It's just not us saying it.
Okay. All right, folks. Sorry for I, that diversion. That's okay. Thank you. And thank you. Um, it gives us another second to pause and yes, yeah, say thank you very much for all the hard work that helped share the story and the values behind the budget, because I think that that really is how we share what those numbers mean. And that is that it is responding to our commitment to um, equity. It is responding to our commitment to our vision. It's responding to our commitment to our students and staff and responsible to our community. So thank you all very much. I know how much goes into making this come to be. Thank you to the board for engaging with the depth of information that was important for you to feel comfortable as we went through the process. It was a different version of the process. And I think it uh, maybe gave us a little bit more time to go to the depth that each of us personally felt was important for us. So thank you for bearing with us in a little bit of a different process. Thank you to Beth and Brian um, for helping us sort of reimagine how to do this in a way that felt more effective for everyone. So thanks, I'm glad we unadjourned. And, <laughs> and I am going to, I'm gonna see no more hands for comments. All right, speak now or forever, <laughs> hold your peace. We are adjourning at 7.36, Liz. <laughs> Okay. Thanks, everybody. Good night, have a have a good night. night. See you. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.